everybody. You totally caught me talking about rocks. Welcome to Rock Talk with Ellie. This is one take, one cut. This is unscripted. This is just me talking about rocks, geology, and minerals and sharing it with you. So today I am out in the wild and I am around a bunch of granite. So I'm going to tell you about the difference between a granitic pluton and a batholith. Now, if you're thinking you're that they're the same thing, you're kind of close. But here's the differences. So, a pluton is a single magma event, and it is an intrusive igneous rock. It's made up of a single composition. It cools over time underground in our Earth's crust, and then eventually through erosion, it's pushed to the surface. Now, a batholith is hundreds to thousands of plutons. That's right. So different magma events get kind of jumbled together and create a huge batholith. And they form in the same way. You have a volcano that erupts and you have a magma chamber that's underneath. Or you have surrounding magma chambers that are older after a volcano has kind of moved on or that hot spot has moved on. And so, or the hot spot stays and the tectonic plates, so the vent moves, so therefore the lava has to find a new way to escape. Or sometimes it just stays underground in pools. So those big ma magma chambers can kind of intrude on each other over time. So if you have hundreds of these events, then you have hundreds of different compositions of magma that intrude into one another. This is creating that batholith. So as it cools, it's very slowly. It's very deep underground. This can take hundreds of thousands to millions of years. As it's cooling, tectonic plates are shifting, uplift is happening, and eventually that granite batholith gets to our surface and it starts to erode off. And normally you get a lot of spheroidal weathering, such as the weathering of the granite around me. Now, different mountain compositions to give you an example, um, um, now I'm forgetting Spirit Mountain granite in Nevada is the an example of a single pluton and the Sierra Nevadas are considered a giant batholith. So th there are two actual examples that you could look up if you wanted to know the difference. So a pluton is just something is a, a, a single event that is tens of miles, you know, across where a granite batholith can be hundreds of square miles. It's a huge, huge difference. So the difference in chemical composition can also be amazing. Now, to break that down, a granite is composed of silica-rich magma that has a lot of either alkaline feldspar or potassic feldspar, and some minor minerals such as mica, biotite, amphiboles, and sometimes hornblende. Now, if you're putting a bunch of those together into a batholith, this is where the magic happens because you can get massive giant growths. So let's see, there's, it, let's say that there's different elemental inclusions, um, such as titanium, more calcium, manganese, that kind of a thing, which would normally come with secondary mineralization, but doesn't necessarily have to. But this is where you're going to get your pegmatites that form within the batholith as it's cooling. So it's just a section of the rock where super saturated mineral fluids stay together. Or as it's cooling also underground, you can get hydrothermal fluid that's trapped in those areas. That's also basically leaching out minerals from the granite itself to create a brand new batch of something cool. Now, if you look behind me, you can see this section of the rock that looks like a stripe through it. Well, that stripe is a secondary mineralization that happened within this batholith. So the rock had split and rich, silica-rich fluid infiltrated, or infiltrated, is that the word I'm looking for? Maybe not. But basically, it filled up this crack and then slowly over time, the water evaporated off and you were left with the silica that resolidified healing whatever scar that was, or it could have cracked the rock itself, then intruded into it, and then solidified. But regardless, it's an awesome cross-cutting relationship of silica-rich fluid within a granite. 
Now, why it weathers spheroidally, I'm not exactly sure, but the way that it happens is through water, sand, and wind, and the, the, all of those elements swirling around the rock, uh, whether you get heavy rain and a lot of sand, um, or sand in the air, that kind of thing, and it's you're swirling around and basically shaping it spheroidally or kind of rounded. Another thing that's really, really important to know about this, uh, or I guess maybe not important to know, but fun fact, is a lot of mechanical weathering happens within granite. So you get big old cracks, like the one behind me. So that could have been filled up with water at one point in time, or water or snow was in the area, and then it freezes, the water expands, cracking the rock. And so further mechanical weathering is also another way how they weather spheroidally. Let's see. Um, interesting things that can be found in granite. Uh, you can get microcline, you can get barrel, you can get tourmaline. Um, a lot of gold is found near granite if it has secondary quartz mineralization. And that just means that it was a secondary event that brought in the quartz into the rock, kind of like this cross cutting vein, but there wouldn't be gold there from the way that it looks, how tiny it is, and just the relationship with the rock. You can tell that that wouldn't be gold. What else? No, well, I guess that's all I could think of at the moment. It's a very cool feature. Oh, one thing that's interesting to know is that when granite composes, it's called decomposing granite or DG. Pretty simple, right? But what a lot of people don't know is the silica pushes away, leaves the area, but the feldspar usually stays. Now, what's cool about that is feldspar weathers into clay and you can get your smectites, smectites, your kaolinites and different types of clay within a decomposed granite. But your smectites are gonna swell. This is one of the reasons why if you're on a dirt road and it starts to rain, and you're in an area of a lot of decomposed granite, you want to get out of there fast because that smectite, as it swells, is going to get stuck in your tires and it's going to create a racing slick. It can be a very, very scary situation. Hmm. I guess that's kind of it that I have to talk about on granites, plutons, and batholiths. But yeah, when you're thinking about it, just think that a pluton is made up of a single magma event and a batholith is created from tens to hundreds of plutons. Thank you guys so much for just being here and I'll see you on the next Rock Talk.